Keep Nintendo weird, everybody. It's me, Seth, happy as always to be here with you today. Uh, just really excited to talk about the game that we have on deck this week. We are talking this one right here, folks. A real one, ARMS, for the Nintendo Switch. Man, I have been wanting to cover this game for a really long time on the show. I, I think this one is going to be interesting for a few reasons. Because ARMS is a first-party AAA Nintendo IP. And I think that some people might look at that and say, well, hang on, Seth, like... Isn't that a little bit outside of your purview? Should you be covering, like, these kind of more prolific first-party Nintendo IP? And my answer to that is, this is not, you know, the show isn't called Keep Nintendo Obscure, or Keep Nintendo, you know, Unpopular, or Keep Nintendo Underappreciated. It's Keep Nintendo Weird, right? And this is a weird Nintendo game through and through. It's a really interesting, unique fighting game, and I think maybe one of the most interesting things about ARMS is that, I mean, really the story behind how this game ended up is almost more interesting than the game itself. I mean, I love this game and I think it's super unique, super well done, really special, did a lot of things right. And and we're certainly going to get into all of that here on the show this time. Um, but I, I think that the fact that this game is not lauded in the way that a lot of the, especially in the Switch era, I mean, Nintendo is on such a high right now um, with with all of its games. Like, everything that comes out practically for the Switch seems like it's being talked about for years to come. I mean, people are still talking about games like Breath of the Wild and Mario Kart and Mario Odyssey and stuff like this. This game, by the way, made by the Mario Kart team. So why is it? And, and you know, the game sold actually fairly well for a new IP, but why is it? that it hasn't latched on in the way that some of these other Switch games have. Why is it that, I mean, there's a really dedicated fan base of ARMS players and people who play the game competitively and people who are passionate about the game, but why is it not being talked about in the same breath as some of these other games, right? That is something that we're going to get into today. And so the question then became, who do I want to talk about this game with, right? Who do I want to invite on to chat about the game? And I stumbled upon a YouTuber by the name of Reese Anderson. It goes by Reset on both on social media and on YouTube. And I found his ARMS video. I think it was recommended to me in the YouTube algorithm or on Twitter or something like that. Uh, however, I arrived to it. I found Reese's video in which he covers exactly this. Uh, and does a really great articulate job of dissecting kind of why ARMS is special and why um, it maybe didn't take off in the way that it deserved to. And I, I think that is a really important point when it comes to talking about ARMS. I mean, this game kind of deserved better than it ended up getting, I think. And so we're going to talk about the game with Reese. I, I got in touch with him and reached out to him, and he was super kind, super generous. He was just like, he's like, look, man, I'm in the middle of a move, but like, let's make it work. And um, it just, it always blows me away, like, how kind people are um, and how generous they are with their time and, like, just willingness to <laughs> come on this weird little show to talk about a weird Nintendo game with me. And, and Reese was no exception, and he is just a really smart guy with the voice of God, you know? Like, he just has this deep, booming voice and, um, you know, just brought a lot of great points to the conversation, and, and I think it's a really, really good one, and I hope that fans of this game will... Um, like what we have to say and, and kind of um, we're, we're going to pick apart a little bit um, why this game maybe hasn't taken off and, and why we think maybe a sequel is a possibility and things we'd like to see in a sequel, what makes the game special. We're going to get into all of that, um, but I just, uh, I don't know, I, I just really love this game and I want to do right by this game's fans and um, I, I think this is a really special little game that uh, deserved, it, it was successful, yes, but it deserved to be more. It deserves to be talked about in the way that, you know, Super Smash Brothers is talked about. I mean, this is such a unique fighting game that is so singular to the Switch. And um, anyway, I'm not going to ramble anymore. We're going to welcome Reese to the show. We're going to talk about ARMS. We're going to get into everything. And of course, we're going to keep Nintendo weird. <laughs> All 
right. Hello, Reese. How are you doing, man? I'm doing good. How are you? Doing great. Thanks for doing this. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I'm always down to talk about some weird Nintendo games. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, we are in the business of talking about weird Nintendo games here on Keep Nintendo Weird, as you might imagine. Um, man, I'm, I'm really excited because I, you know, I'm a, I'm a new fan and I caught wind of your ARMS video that you recently did that I highly recommend everybody check out because it's a, it's a great video. And I kind of went down the rabbit hole a little bit of your content and just sort of started watching all of your video essays. And, and I mean, just like really well done, high quality stuff. I mean, if you would, just to sort of um, introduce for the people who may not be familiar with your stuff, kind of let us know what you do. Uh, so I'm Reset, R-E-E-S-E-T, just my name with the T at the end. Mm -hmm. uh, I do a lot of like video essays and like retrospectives of like different video games and like topics and like have like comedy skits and stuff in there. Yeah. Think of it kind of like angry video game nerd, Scott the Waz, but sure. a lot more green screen. <laughs> so <laughs> sure. A lot of a lot of weird weird little review bits thrown into like an overall like video essay. Yeah. Kinda weird. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I love it. And if, if you guys can't hear, if you guys can't tell, he's got like the voice of God um, and, and does the um, the announcing everyone thing on Twitter, which is awesome. Just such a treat to uh, to follow that and see like people who would never get announced in Smash, you know, be announced in Smash, so to speak. So uh, really cool to uh, to talk with you about ARMS, man. I this It's a game that I've wanted to cover um, for a long time on the show because, and, and I think this is something you tap into a little bit in your video, which obviously you guys are going to find links to everything Reese in the episode description. I don't want to cannibalize the video itself too much, but, um, it, it's something you did tap into quite a bit. There was kind of like this really weird, well done Nintendo game that was, um, kind of like it, it was a success on the face of it. But it wasn't, like, it had no staying power, you know? And I, I feel like nobody really talks about it anymore in the way that people still talk about games like Breath of the Wild and Mario Kart. And, I mean, this game was done by the Mario Kart team, you know? So that, that's so fascinating to me. I mean, what was your kind of first exposure and takeaway with ARMS? Uh, well, I first played it when they had the, like, test punch or like the kind of <laughs> right. like splatoon tile like test fire and i was like i really i really enjoyed like the couple hours i played of it so and then i did buy it day one i was like this yeah. is like a really fun i really like the motion controls of it mm -hmm. i know a lot of people aren't super in the motion controls but i was like this is like an example where it's like i could show this to anyone and i think they'd understand it and it would be fun just us punch in the air for a couple hours in the living yeah. room yeah that's a great so, point it's it's funny. Did you are were you a fan of like um like the Wii boxing or Punch Out or anything like that on Wii? Oh yeah, uh, I'm not a huge on Wii boxing. i have never that good at it, but I absolutely love Punch Out Wii. I've been playing through it a couple times. I'm actually yeah. probably gonna do a video of it sometime down the road. Heck yeah! So I love that. No, it's a, that's a great game, and it, it definitely. I, I was reading an interview with um either the producer of the game, I'm blanking on his name, but again, he's he's basically the producer of this game. This game is made, again, by the Mario Kart team, and the producer, I believe, is the guy who has kind of been the head of Mario Kart since, like, 7 or something like that. Um, and, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong about any of this, by the way, Reese. If you, if you know more than I do, please stop me in, in my no tracks. Um, but um, I, I remember reading about that, and the initial concept for arms, like they always kind of had that idea of the punches and, um, and like steering the punches weirdly, which is like a huge mechanic in arms. Um, and punch out was something that I think they were toying with early in development. They were like, can, can we get Nintendo characters in here? Can we get punch out characters in here? Um, and, and they ended up going with, you know, their own designs and stuff. And I think they're great, but I, I find that really interesting. Like it could have been kind of a smash brothers esque thing, but with a really unique mechanic. Um, yeah. That kind of sounds like 
Splatoon, where I believe it was supposed to be Mario characters early on, and they're seems like a lot of times when they're working on a big new IP, they're like, do we just reuse other characters? Like, does this need to be a new IP? Right. But, That's an interesting point. Yeah, N- Nintendo seems to be very, like, they, they rest on their laurels a lot, right? I mean, we love Nintendo, but they rest on their laurels a lot. And so it's kind of it's kind of nice to see whenever Nintendo does kind of throw caution to the wind and make a new IP in Splatoon. I'm glad you brought up Splatoon because that's a good example of a series that they threw that out there and it was successful like immediately, especially in Japan. It's huge, you know, and we got a third one coming in arms. We got one, you know, no sign of any kind of sequel. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, if like you said, it is kind of being headed by the same guy who makes Mario Kart, that could be an issue, obviously, because I assume yeah. they have to choose between which one they're developing. They're going to be developing another Mario Kart, right. although it has been a while since we've seen one of those too. So That's true. kind of, it's definitely in a weird space where we don't really know if there's another one coming or if they have any plans for the series, because. I mean, a lot of people assumed once Min Min got into Smash, they were like, okay, definitely promoting an ARMS 2. It's like, not really. It really seemed like they were just trying to remind people that ARMS was a thing. Right. They kind of lifted up again, but it kind of just, once again, just disappeared almost immediately. Yeah. Which is I, just... I, I find that fascinating. Like, the, the, the way that ARMS came out... And it's it's what we always say that we want as Nintendo fans. We want to see Nintendo make exciting new IP. And so here we are with Switch, great new console. Here's a great new IP made by a great team. And it comes out and it does well initially. But then, and they, they even supported it for like a good, what, six to eight months? And, yeah, you know, with updates and new characters and stuff like that. But then it just sort of fell to the wayside and they even tried to do kind of an esports angle with it. And you know, that didn't really take off. It's a shame. Um, but anyway, let, let me not get too far ahead of myself. So let's, let's set the stage for what arms is. How do you describe arms Reese? Uh, <laughs> I describe it as like a very motion control, like centric fighting game. I know you can play with other controls, but I just find that to be the ideal way to play. And it's yeah. just all about like long distance, like long distance boxing is basically the best way to describe it. That's a good quote. Yeah. Long distance boxing. I like that. Yeah. And and I mean like the the motion controls. I'm with you. I like to play with motion controls. I like to actually throw the punches, get that kind of like fine control, you know. I, I like that a lot. And so like, yeah, the big gimmick being that Um, all of these characters have, well, most of them anyway, have extendable arms. Some of them fight with their hair. Some of them fight with DNA strands and it's all completely normal and fine. Um, but that is kind of the base gimmick and and idea behind the game is everybody has these extendable arms that you control with, with motion or with a pro controller, if you want to be lame. Um, and I, I think it's a really interesting Uh, mechanic. I think it's an interesting idea. And they created a just swath of interesting characters to compete in this like arms tournament. There's like a little bit of light lore to arms. You, you, you tapped into it a little bit in your video. (laughs) Yeah. I didn't get, I didn't get too into it. It's kind of like Splatoon. Also Splatoon did it. There's a lot of like connections here to Splatoon. They're similar. How they just kind of have like unlockable little like Kind of like PNGs will be like, here's some like lore and some historics. Yeah. I remember it's basically for a lot of the arms fighters, they're just like, we don't know how they got their arms. They just woke up one day. <laughs> and I think there's like, I think it was from like the arms direct, but there was just like a quote from Springman, and he was just like, I woke up one day with these long arms and they were pretty rad. And that's just, <laughs> that's his initial reaction. <laughs> That's all you need. (laughs) That's all you need. Why not? Oh, my physical appearance has changed forever. Pretty (laughs) rad. (laughs) Pretty rad. Pretty rad. Might as well compete in a tournament. And then you have like, you know, Min Min is is definitely one of those standout characters. Obviously, she became a Smash fighter, which 
I think immediately kind of propels you into the the public yeah. zeitgeist, you know, with Nintendo fans. So they definitely showed a little bit of support there. But it, it, it seems like to me, Reese, that a lot of the reason this game didn't have a lot of staying power was a big case of too little too late, you know? Like, because they, they come out the gate with it, and it's a great concept, again, great characters, and it sold actually pretty well. Like, I think in its first month, it sold over 2 million copies. Um, yeah. Which... Yeah, I don't know if it was in the first couple of months, but I know it's, like, yeah. around the 3 million area. So it definitely sold well, especially yeah. for a new IP. Right. So for a new like, IP, Not an issue sure. in that respect. So, and like... Then... If we're talking just straight up financials, I mean, it did well, but at the same time, in the Switch era, Nintendo can release a port of Mario Kart and sell 30 million, so... <laughs> yeah. Kind of like, it sold really well, but just compared to what Nintendo's been putting out, so it's not as well. Right. But yeah. by no means was it financially a fail failure. Right. Yeah, it's um, it's not a financial failure, and, and it's something that I think that like they were trying to tap into that kind of like esports market with it and they were trying to foster that a little bit. But I feel like, and again, you kind of get into this a little bit in your arms video. I, I feel like they should have been more aggressive, you know, with it. They should have been more like, you know, like like ready to seize the opportunity that was arms. Like they they could have tapped into that quite a bit more and they could have really made it something big. Um, I, I, and I think that there's some kind of things within the game itself. I think that the game, um, is, it could have used like a more robust single player component. Um, it could have used, it could have used a lot of things to make it more stand out, a bigger deal than it ended up being. Cause again, like it's a financial success, but who's talking about it now? Just you and me, <laughs> you know, yeah. that's it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really weird because they like, did make some e esports like push with it, and, like the mm -hmm. tournament mode is one thing I got into in the video, and it's, it's like that's such a good feature to have because otherwise you have to unlock every single arm. So it's like they did a lot of different things. Like they had a few tournaments to like support the scene, and then like you can even check out like tournament clips in the game. So it's like they did a decent amount, but they definitely could have been more aggressive. And they maybe would have been if they had any experience actually supporting an eSport. But yeah. they have not with Smash Bros. They've had so long to just show some support to competitive scenes. And they just haven't. And I just feel like that's probably a weakness of the company more than anything. That's a great point. Because they, I mean, famously, there's a whole, like, save Splatoon, save Smash, you know, stuff going on. That That's a really good point. They... That's something that I would really like to see Nintendo embrace, you know, rather than kind of shy away from. Like, we're, I feel like we're seeing Nintendo shy away from esports a little too much. Um, even though they tried to make a little bit of a push and they tried to do their own thing, it's like at the same time, you're taking yourself away from places like Evo and, and whatnot. And yeah, it's, it's a bit of a miss, I think, again, for, for the company. I think you're right on about that. Um, but in terms of, what so I mean like we we've kind of talked about what the game is we've talked about the kind of missteps of it, but to focus on the positives I mean I think there's a lot of positives with Arms like I think it's a a really good game and I think something that goes undersung about this game and I'm glad you brought this up in your video is that this is probably one of the few Nintendo Switch games that does online right you know. <laughs> yeah the, the online is absolutely fantastic i just love the way they set it up it's, it's so easy to just jump in and just play a bunch of different games you don't have to like wait even like smash or mario kart i have to wait and i get disconnected a lot and yeah you'll have to set up they'll like have all these settings so you can set up set up like a sp particular match and then it'll just send me into like a free-for-all or some random match it's just it's kind of all over the place, but ARMS kind of just has a two main mode where it'll either just have me play competitively or throw me into literally anything I want, and it's just quick and easy. It's, it's just great. Yeah, so fluid. Like, I, I wish, like, you, you play something like Smash or even Mario Kart, and it's just like, man, like, why can't this be 
like arms. Like I don't understand how they haven't figured it out until then. And, and they haven't really tapped into it well since. Um, I, yeah, I mean, what are some, if you could pinpoint, I always ask my guests this on this show, if you could pinpoint something about arms to you that you think is the number one thing that makes it special, makes it something that is worth kind of investing in for Nintendo worth kind of maybe even revisiting it. We can kind of talk about a potential sequel, maybe, you know, at some point down the road, but I mean, like what's, what makes arms special to you? Uh, I really just like the overall world and like characters they've kind of created. Like I think the art style and character design is just spectacular. And so good. Like every single one of those characters, like every character having their own, like weird arms, the way it's like DNA strand or it's hair or just a robot. Like yeah. everything they've done there is like really great and creative. And I just kind of want to see more of that. Mm-hmm. Which, yeah. What, who's your favorite character? Yeah. Ah, oh, that's tough. I really <laughs> like Helix's design, but Helix I also is mine. probably not my favorite character to play. Mm-hmm. You know what? Actually, I have to go with Max Braz. Max okay. Braz is absolutely love that guy. It's like a beefier Captain Falcon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just this kind of like get. beefy All Might sort of guy, you know, from my hero. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's great, and that that was so like that was so obvious. Like when when they added him to the game, it's like of course. Like of course you need to add Max Brass to the game, yeah. I um I agree. I I love the art. I love the world. I love the concept. I think that the stages even in the game are so varied and unique. Like they they do such a great job with like like you want to know more about this world. Like I I want to read like an Arms comic book or like an Arms animated series or something like that. You know, like I want to know yeah, then- more. I know they had a, like a visual novel that got canceled too, so they did have something right? like that. Yeah, it was. <sighs> they announced it like right around when the game came out, and it was kind of like a release date to be announced for like over oh. a year, and then they just quietly canceled it. So it, I think it was supposed to like follow Springman, so it was some yeah. kind of like plot with him. So Spring they did Man. have plans for something like that, but. I guess they just kind of, when everything kind of fell off and people stopped talking about it, they just kind of canceled it. Ugh. S- Springman, of course, the protagonist that they will not admit is the protagonist. Um, they... Oh, yeah, because everyone's the protagonist, you know? <laughs> yeah. The protagonist of Street Fighter and Bison. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Everybody's the protagonist, of course. Um, yeah, that, that, man, that would have been so cool that this game needs something like that because like the, the gameplay itself was solid. The world was there. The characters are there. I just wanted to dig into that more, man. Like I just wanted, like you were saying, they, they give you, they drip feed you the PNGs, <laughs> you know, they give you just a little bit, but like, I, I really, if we were to like talk about an arms too, that's the number one thing I want. Like, I, I really just want to, like, dig into that world more, tell more of a story through its arcade mode. I think that the game actually has, because one thing we haven't talked about yet is the fact that you can swap out arms um, at, like, different kind of, like, weapons. Like, you can weaponize your arms. And I think that's something I would like to see greatly expanded upon in a potential sequel, too. Because I feel like that was another thing where... They, they went for it, but they didn't go as far as I wanted them to, you know? Oh, yeah. I mean, there's a bunch of different stuff you could do. You could obviously just keep making more arms, but yeah. something like being able to switch arms mid-match or something like that, or, like, somehow upgrade your arms, like, mid-fight, something like that would be interesting. One thing in the multiplayer, actually, is there's... You can just play with big arms. Yeah. It's just, like, an option for matches, make your arms twice as big, like... Something like that, if there was just a way you could make your arms bigger mid-match. Yeah, what? Something what really th- weird to just give it a little more depth. Yes. Why, why? That That's something that I was kind of, like, curious about. Like, why didn't they... Do, do you think it was just kind of, like, a temptation to stick to kind of a, like, raw skill play to, like, not go in-depth with it like that? Because I think there's a potential to do things like you were talking about, like having power-ups or customization options or something like that, that could really give it 
that extra layer of depth that they didn't really tap into, at least not with the first with this first game. I Yeah, that's that's what's kind of strange about ARMS, is they kinda of like half of it kind of seems like they're trying to go for the, like the more casual, like easy to pick up, but then like they're also pushing it as like tournaments and esports, so it's like if you want to do that route, you can go more de- in depth mechanics. But if you're going for the casual route, uh, it would make sense to make it keep it like that. But yeah, yeah, it's kind of strange the way they kind of just market it. it's like this is a competitive fighting game, but it's heavily motion controlled based for a lot of players, and it's easy to pick up. It's just like you could definitely add a lot more to the game if you wanted to, and I felt that just kind of was the issue a lot of people had was it. It's just the mechanics didn't go too deep as a lot of people wanted them to. So Mm -hmm. it got a little repetitive for a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's fair. And I think, though, that, like, the the, the game has such a solid canvas that I think that if they were to go back to the well, and maybe they will. I mean, who knows? Maybe they'll make an ARMS 2. Because as we've said, financially, it was a success. So, like, maybe Nintendo sees it as a viable option to go back and kind of make another one. And, um, like, like I said, I, I kind of would love to see them improve upon, um, improve upon the story. We've talked about maybe giving the weapon system a little bit more depth, the actual arm system themselves. There's the obvious stuff, add more, more characters, stuff like that. But, um, I, I, yeah, I just, I think that I'm, I'm looking for Nintendo to really champion, this game more than they did like they they did a push but i i really think that there is missed potential there it's a special game that could have really been like look at what they're doing right now right with metroid dread coming out like they're tweeting about that game every day man like every day and like wario yeah. just came out they had wario take over twitter and whatnot you know where was that for arms man <laughs> yeah know? I mean, they stepped up their marketing a lot, I think, since, like, the launch of the Switch. Uh, glad to see Metroid actually getting, like, a lot of attention as a Metroid fan. Uh, yes. Definitely definitely hoping this game finally shows people that uh, this series should be up there with, like, Zelda and Mario. Yes. At least in my opinion. Totally unbiased Metroid <laughs> fan here. Uh, no, I agree. Yeah, I love yeah. Metroid. Yeah, I, but uh... there, there are definitely games that they just kind of will do less for and just kind of send out and they'll be like why didn't this perform as well this is weird like i bought a uh, the famicom detective club and i think that game yes. apparently i think it just bombed it's like i thought that was all right i mean there's definitely a lot of problems they had with it first of all calling it famicom detective club isn't gonna yeah just gonna <laughs> confuse a lot of people no <laughs> physical release and no like english dub there are definitely issues but yeah yeah, yeah, it's like, hey, let's let's just send these things out and kind of just uh, see if it sinks or swims. There, there's a little, a uh, few little head scratchers there, and and the way that Arms uh, was kind of floated out, kind of is a is a good example of that. I feel like because it's a, I don't know, it's it's a special game that that I'd like to see Nintendo do yeah. more with in the future. I feel like it will get a sequel though. I feel like they're so. not done with it. I get kind of the same feeling uh, with Arms as I do like Pikmin, where it's like. Mm. It's not the biggest series, but I feel like internally there's a lot of love for the like characters and world they made. So I feel like they definitely want to revisit it, even if it's not like the most like financially lucrative decision they could make. I just feel like it's definitely something they want to keep in, and that's why they probably added Min Min to Smash. Yeah, May- yeah, that's a great point actually, because maybe it was less about you know, obligation. Because I think I think that some people look at it and they're like, well, you know, of course Min Min gets added to Smash because it's a, you know, it's a first-party Nintendo fighting game. It needs to have representation in Smash or whatever. But maybe you're right. Maybe it is kind of to acclimate, you know, this this audience because Smash is obviously many times bigger than ARMS will ever be. Um, maybe it is. Maybe, maybe that was kind of a way to dip the toes in the water and kind of get people used to arms and used to the concepts and used to a character like Min Min. Uh, that's, that's a good point. I, I hope so. I hope you're right. I would love to see them come back to the well on it. Um, and, and I think that that was an interesting thing you said about Pikmin too, because Pikmin is another one where like, that's a series that hardcore Nintendo fans really love, but 
they know that it's never going to be like Pikmin's never going to be mass appeal, you know, like that's yeah. never going to be a 20 million. I think, seller. They're, <laughs> I think they're definitely they've always definitely tried. Cause like Pikmin are just like one of their most marketable characters. Like they're so easy to market to like children, Q. but then it's like, yep. but then they show the game. It's like, this is an RTS. Have fun. <laughs> right. like, I have no idea what I'm doing. Yeah, this is like a so, strategy game with survival like mechanics and stuff like this with your cute little Pikmin alien characters. But but you're right, they do have some love for it internally because you're even seeing like at Super Nintendo World in Japan the little hidden Pikmin and stuff like that. And it's like this is a series that has never sold that well, and you're gonna have them here in your theme park, you know? So yeah, I, that's a that's a really I, I guess I never really entered that into my calculus when it when it comes to arms because I think it's easy to write it off and be like, well, Nintendo clearly doesn't care about this. They tried, they gave it the old college try, and and we're never gonna see it again. But I I think you just changed my mind on that. I think that there might be um, an arms too. Do you think do you think we'll see another arms before we see another Mario Kart? Ah. Uh... It's hard to say. I know I have at least a few more years with the Switch left. Yeah. But I don't... It's really... Everyone's been... It's the question people have been asking since the Switch came out. It's like, are we getting a new official Mario Kart? It's right. been a long time. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if it would maybe be on Switch or the next console. It's hard to really say. Uh, my bet would probably be on Mario Kart. I think that might be the safer bet. Sure. But I do think in time we will see another ARMS game, whether it's on Switch or the next console. I do think they will try again with that. Yeah. Well, you know what's going to happen now, Reese, is now that we've recorded this and we've made this episode, they're going to, the second it comes out or right before it comes out, just to mess with me, they're going to go ahead and announce ARMS too. So. Oh, yeah. Well, the <laughs> September Direct's going to drop. Yeah. Shadow Drop with ARMS too. <laughs> yeah. Arms 2 Shadow Drop September Direct you heard it here first. Um man, yeah, so I I don't know, did you have any other final kind of thoughts about Arms as as we're kind of wrapping up? I mean, I I think that I think that the series is just really something something special and unique to the Switch. I mean, so often you know, as as again, as Nintendo fans, we want new IP and we want something interesting done well. I think the execution as a game was really good, but we want to see more from it. And I just think that, I think that's a really special world and a special, you know, cast of characters that, that I, I hope you're right, man. I, I hope we see more of it. Yeah, they they definitely tapped into something fun. The, the core mm -hmm. gameplay is really fun. They got great world and characters, as I've said, and I'll say again and again. And it just feels like they really tapped on this idea and just kind of stuck with a very core set of, like, ideas when there was so much, I feel they could have just expanded and kept making more. It's just, just make more arms. Just keep... Just expand this idea more. And so they kind of like... Just felt like they gave up really quickly. Which is just a little disappointing yeah. when they've supported so many other games for years down the road. You know, so it's it, just... It's, it's interesting that, that um, when you just said that, when you said they gave up really quickly, that triggered something in my mind. Uh, a conversation that I've kind of been having both on our main show all in and, and I've been kind of seeing this floating around on Twitter. I wonder if you've seen a little bit of this too, Reese, the idea of Nintendo becoming a little too complacent, becoming a little too safe, a little too squeaky clean, you know, um, this came up recently when, um, uh, I think it was some junk about like, they, they took like a taunt out of Daisy, uh, and Mario golf or something like that, you know? Yeah. And I heard about that. Yeah, and it, it, it kind of spurred this conversation of, like, is Nintendo becoming, like, afraid to dip into some of these kind of more weird IP, like, really special weird IP, and we're seeing stuff like WarioWare and stuff like that happen, but is Nintendo afraid to to be weird? Uh, I feel like it's kind of weird with the Switch. I feel like they definitely have gotten a lot more complacent with a lot of things doing really well. They don't feel like yeah. they need to experiment as much. They still definitely have some weird, like, IP like WarioWare coming out. But I feel like for a lot of their bigger series, they kind of kept it safe. Like, when they launched, we had, like, Breath of the Wild and Mario Odyssey, and I was like, 
wow, Mario's doing something. A lot of this looks really fresh and new for Mario. And then it's like, yeah. then you look at the rest of the Mario like games on Switch, like the new Super Mario Bros. again. Mario Golf and Mario Tennis kind of just feel very basic Mario very Tennis rare. Mario Golf. Yep. And then like Yoshi's Crafted World, just like I played the demo of that and it was like, I loved Woolly World. And it's just Me like, too. this seems very basic and like, same with Kirby. It's just like some of these franchises, I've just kept. I see the Switch release as just a very standard release. Whereas I look at games like Mario Odyssey and like this is a game I will probably remember for years and years. As opposed to like Kirby, it's like the next Kirby game that comes out, I'll immediately forget Star Allies. Yeah, that's a great point. It, it's. I, I want to see more things like arms and le I mean, look, I, and I liked star allies and I liked craft but th these are the most like forgettable entries probably in their respective series. It's just so it, it's just very like, again, just squeaky clean, kind of just boring, you know, like I don't, I want something vibrant and unique like arms. And I, you know, I want to, you know, I, I want to load up a game and have that like, Oh, you know, I want that. Like, there's such an energy to it, man, that like is missing from from some of these first party Nintendo games. So I, th I think you're spot on, man. I totally agree. Um, man, it's it's been really fun to chat about Arms with you, a game that I think needs needs a lot more love. Um, Reese, before we wrap up, uh, do me a favor and kind of let folks know where they can find you and follow you and everything you're doing. Uh, you can just find me on YouTube. Search Reset once again. R E E S E T. Uh, you can find me that. on Twitter, reset underscore YT, if you want to check me out there. And, uh, yeah, it's basically where you can find me. See nice. my face on a thumbnail. <laughs> With the Waluigi hat and whatnot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love it. Well, man, thanks for doing this again. I know I know you just had like a big move and whatnot, so I, I really appreciate you taking the time. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me. I'm always welcome to like just talk about some games. Yeah, man. Usually yeah. it's just me typing, talking about it in a room, listening to music. Yeah. yeah. Talking to another human being about games is always, always kind of nice. Yeah. It's nice to have, oh. do especially after this past year. It's like, hey, some human interaction. That's a nice thing, especially to talk about something uh, as cool as ARMS. So, again, uh, I really appreciate yeah. it. Guys, um, you're going to find links again to everything Reese, to his YouTube channel, to his Twitter, and all that good stuff. Uh, in the episode description, highly, highly, highly recommend you do. I, I think a super underrated YouTuber, man. Like I, You're just one of those YouTubers where I watch your stuff, and I'm like, how does this not have more views? Like, how is this not one of those... I'm, I'm not saying, you know some of your contemporaries are people like Scott the Waz and that's like, you know, the, the stratosphere, but dude, you deserve way more views. I'm just going to, I'm just going to say it. You deserve way more views. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah. I'm sure, you know, and pretty much anyone making a channel knows it's just kind of hard to grow that audience and yep. people find you. Yeah. Kind of like very exponential thing. You just kind of got to hit that bump and let everything go from there. But Yeah. I mean, do you want me to announce, like, make a final announcement for the... Sure, sure, absolutely. The, the outro? Hey, that'd be great. All Go right. for it. Uh, well, thanks for having me, and just remember to keep Nintendo weird. <laughs> Adios. Oh, man, that's so good. Oh, that's so good. Thanks for doing that, man. Yeah, I, uh... Oh, that's great. Yeah, you... And again, that's another thing I'll link to, the announcing everyone on, uh on Twitter. So good. Anyway, guys, um, if you want to follow this show, you can do that on your favorite podcast feeds. You can follow me on Twitter at $2 hero. You can follow this show on Twitter at KNW podcast. You can email me, keep Nintendo weird at gmail.com. All that stuff's in the episode description as well. Um, so yeah, until next time guys, Reese, thank you so much and, um, create what you want to create and thank you for helping me keep Nintendo weird. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me on. Ha, ha, ha.